I don't to say anything about uh, about Karumi again, but we are a company based in in write good code and write uh, architecture thinking architecture in Android, in iOS, and in Mac. They are the guys. Okay, this is the guys that uh, form the company. Uh, all people work with uh, with Android and iOS, Android or iOS and Android, iOS and backend. We work with the Scala, with call, with uh, sound calling, with uh, uh, with Python, with JavaScript. Okay, we know a lot of technologies. And these two guys uh, working with me in this in this framework. Okay. Uh, Pedro is really have a, lit, a really good articles about uh, about an architecture and testing. It's really 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 good. Have a really good articles about testing in mobile and Android, and his um, his GitHub and, tw and Twitter are really interesting. And Sergio knows about a lot of uh, about open source and Android code and functional code, and he's awesome. And he has some articles that are really good and some open open source. Uh, this really good like Lester is a library for permissions in Android. Okay, uh, clean, uh, Rossi is a clean architecture framework. I have sense why a framework for make clean architecture when clean architecture is about don't make, don't use framework. Okay, it's not a framework itself. It's uh, a way to remove a lot of uh, a lot of boilerplate code that we have in our projects, and given an, an implementation of clean that you can use. In your projects, and an easy an easy way to uh, start to implementing clean in your project. This is the idea of Rossi. It's a tool for us, and the idea is have a uh, sound useful tooling that can make me create clean code in an easy way, and a good example to learn clean. This is a repository. You can access uh, right now. You can access what you want and read the code. Have uh, some good examples. Have a read me. Uh, it's open source. You can you can send your pull requests, your uh, open your resources, make your questions, and read the code. Okay, it's there for you. Uh, why? This is the big question. Why we spend a lot of time building on a framework for create architecture? The first one, the first one of them, is because when we start the company, I think it's two years and a half ago. Uh, I was thinking, okay, I'm starting a new project each every three months. I start in a new project from scratch. I say, really? I need to prepare the dependency gestion again. I need to create the presenters again. I need to create use case handler again. I need to create. I need to define this pattern again. I say, this is a lot of code. I'm spending one week, two week creating infrastructure for each project. And I say, okay. I'm going to remove this one. I'm going to make only one time. I'm going to take all code that I am using in a lot of projects. I am going to try to move on, to move to a layer, a, a architecture layer, and cross the main layer, and a tooling layer, and I'm going to move there and generalize. All code that is in Rossi is uh, for production. It's not a library from the college. It's a library from a company, and it's work that is working in production. And it's the work of a lot of iterations. Okay, from we start with the first version of Rossi. It's, I think it's two years and a half ago, and the first free implementation is, uh, is I spent one year. Okay. The second one is because I like to remove all boilerplate that I have in applications, all error handling code, uh, execute uh, use case code. Uh, define presented code, avoid uh, memory leaks, avoid null pointers, uh, avoid dependency injection, avoid use, use of dependency views. I want to remove all that boilerplate code I have and I put in the framework. I move to the framework. We move to the framework. And because we want something that was easy to change and evolve, change and moving. For this reason, we use clean architecture because. We, for example, we want to take the decision. Of, we are going to use Eric Java. We are going to use other thing. I'm going to use uh, Prodigy Q. We are going to use Model B Presenter. I'm going to use that kind of thing. So how, how, or the dependency injector. And I want to have a place that may easy take the decisions. And I can change in in one place and have to the future, have all accumulative learn of everybody of all Android developers who have in the company. Uh, 
in a cycle to improve all quality codes each time. And the idea is to make something testable. We believe in tests. I say after that, it's our responsibility to create tests, and it's the only way that have that the software works. And um, for this reason, we uh, we make the the framework what is testable. Okay, uh, write test is really important for us, right? And make open source. The idea of make open source is one for show to you guys uh, or learn. I think it's really important uh, share the knowledge with the community. And uh, it's a good idea uh, that you can get our feedback, uh, take your knowledge to us, and uh, and learn all together, and give our knowledge to you guys. And the other one is because it's a really good way to us to create general code, generalize the problem, and create code that everybody can use, and don't leak our implementation of the framework with our own problems. This is the this is the architecture that we follow. This is the architecture of Rossi. I don't know how many people there uh, was watching a talk about clean architecture. You know what clean architecture means or something, whatever. Okay, some of you don't know it, but our idea. I'm going to go. Uh, I'll give a guidelines. I'm going to try to explain in deep on each layer. Okay, the idea is split our application in three layers. This is the green layer. Is the view layer. The blue one is the domain, this is the view, the domain, and the data layer. It's all representation. And we take some, con some considerations about that. Here we are going to use model view presenter. I'm going to explain you in deep in the, in the next slides. And the idea is decouple the render things, the draw things from the domain. For this reason, I'm going to use a presenter that takes decision about presentations about how things is going to be rendered, and activity fragment services and views are only bind uh, the data and the, and the view. This is the domain model. We use use cases. We are going to spend what use cases, but the idea is this is the, the what my application make, and this is the model that sometimes we have normal models, and the we have rich models that are models that have, uh, that have methods and take consideration. For example, I have, uh, have the, a method that uh, a user that have a method that is get my age and use the that birth for calculate the the birth for calculate the age. Okay, this is a rich model. I have, have things, and this one is the data layer that have we use repository patterns to access to to the data. It's a pattern I'm going to explain after that, and the idea is uh, try to make queries on our data and convert to the domain. And we take a really strong decision that this is all our code from this point, from this one. We go out to the main thread there in the presentation, and all this code is synchronous. It's all one call, other call, one call, other call. This is because the most application that we made don't have a really, really, really strong, don't have a really, really, really strong uh, considerations of uh, multi-threading. We are not using uh, we are not making five, six, seven calls to an API and mixing all together or working with a chat. Our application is open the activity, uh, go to an API, take information, and draw. I think so is the most application that are in the market. is open the application, go make a query, take the information, store it in a cache, and return. And you don't need a lot of crazy things to meet this one. Okay, and we uh, we always try to work with this implementation. That not say that we can change, and I'm going to show you how, we can change this one to make in an easy way to use all the things that are not coupled with this one. We're going to start with the UI layer. The UI, we want to divide the UI framework and the UI logic. For this reason, we use model view presenter. Okay, the view, the implementation of views, are activities, fragments, and custom views and services are the framework. They are the framework, and they are only going to be there, the binding between the framework and UI. And all logic, all if that are related with the presentation, is going to be moved to the presenter. Presenter is going to say, okay, uh, if the value is null, uh, well, if the value, if the user doesn't exist, uh, put me or rent to me the, 
uh, then for me uh, the the empty case. If it's used, then for me the user value. Okay, but this decision is in the presenter. It's not in the in the in the activity. And the other way is is easy. Uh, write test about the about the about the UI because I can split and I can write uh, UI testing uh, unit testing from the presenters to the all completely stack or have only tests only with the UI it's going to be half a good point to write tests I can write tests only with the UI on the presenter or I'm going to test with the presenter with the all stack it's a good point for for writing UI testing this is the more or less the way I'm doing. Is the, this is the uh, the views, the implementation of the views, activity farm and service, blah, blah, blah. This is the, the presenter, and the way is activity told to the presenter, presented told with the domain, and this is return, and we did this interface uh, make actions over the activities. Why we create this interface? This interface is important because here I decouple the framework to the uh, presentation logic. And I can change this one, this activity fragment, for other activity fragment, or I can reduce that kind of presenter. And we, are, we want to uh, make, uh, well, I'm going to explain after that. And other important thing is you what this presentation model is uh, in alpha. It's because it's not always mandatory. If you create a, a good domain model and you, you domain is returning uh, read only object, you don't do that object don't have setters and you can mute out your val his value you can receive there and you can use directly your domain object there you don't need to modify to the presentation model you if you are going to be composition or going to uh, do something about the test modify the test uh, read a bitmap make something in this case you can have a presentation model but if not you can take directly your domain model non mutable that is mutable and used in your presentation layer uh, what makes Rossi for this one? Okay, what we make it is uh, we use a Rossi activity. Why we make RNC a no composition? We try to make composition because RNC inheritance inheritance is not good. A stance is not good because you are coupled your activities and your framework. I don't like it. But the problem is that Android is based in is based in our inheritance. It's basic extending things. And this is really, 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 really bad for write a framework. Because if I make in use uh, composition, you can make composition with Rossi, but if you try to make use a uh, composition, uh, you need to repeat a lot of boiler code. And we don't want, okay? We will be pragmatics and not academics. Okay, and other thing that we made is uh, use that annotation, sorry, do use that uh, uh, annotations. Okay, Rossi have a dagger one, they have injection, and have uh, our custom annotation and this presenter. This annotation presenter you can make by code, you can make uh, uh, without use annotation. But if you this one, you are attaching, you are attaching uh, your the presenter uh, to the activity. You don't need to write any code. You need to need to call to resume and, co and, and cost, uh, you need to cost through the the presenter setting things and we make an inversion control. The presenters uh, you forget an activities and fragments and service uh, a custom life life of the of the life of the activities and service and fragments and presenter made for you. And other thing that we need to do is create this kind of method to prepare the presenter. This is because sometimes we do need to pass information to the presenter from the activity. And um, Android sometimes are really great with the status and the, okay, this is in non-create, it's created in on-create, BU and BU created, and we resolve for you with this kind of method. Uh, the presenters. We made the same. We have a Rossi presenter, and we make a, a, th a thing that is really good as is, uh, Reduce, reduce the visibility of interfaces. Force to you and have compilation errors and not have runtime errors. We reduce the error and see and say, okay, you're going to, I, we're going to receive there this kind of view and no other one. And we give you the life cycle for you. Now it's not the activity who call to the presenter and return the control to the activity again. If not, what we made is with 
these base activities, we take the control for you and we resolve the problem for you and we call the methods on, on, on resume. On, for this one, the flow of information comes from the presenter, always from the presenter to the activities of the views implementation. It's really good because I made this one, I put it in the street and we, 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 we launched the code and in this when I launched the project, I went to Novoda and people in SoundCloud was making this one and the Novoda guys was making this one too. The implementation is so different, but the idea is the same. I say, okay, we are working all in the, in the same direction. And the idea is uh, here, for example, is a sample method that I can, I can call and I take the view, it's the implementation. If you check, I take with a get view, I'm going to explain you why, and I will call to the view foo. And this is the implementation for this view is foo and activities from blah, 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 is going to use this one. Okay, what got this one? The idea is extract, as you say, is extract a lot of code to the common code. Okay, extract a lot. For this reason, do you remember that we have uh, some magic thing that mm, take for you and control for you the control of the activities from uh, blah, 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 and resume. Okay, as this all this code. This is a, a presenter lifecycle linker. Imagine that you want to create uh, something that is not uh, provided by, by us, uh, or you want to use composition instead of energy, you take your classes and you uh, use the life linker and you call the methods of the life, life cycle sync, uh, linker and works perfect. For example, in this, code, in this code, we take uh, the presenter annotated, we set in the view for you, and we initialize presenters. With this one, is we are buying a lot of memory leaks. You don't want to think, okay, I'm going to subscribe the presenter, I'm going to unsubscribe the presenter, I'm going to make all that boilerplate, I'm going to forget, and it's going to crap my memory. Other thing is uh, we want to avoid null pointers. Sometimes that's happen when you are creating uh, that kind of framework. So it's you pass the view to the presenter, you make operations, the operation comes, the fragment of activity don't exist, and you and this breakup. Okay. The best solution, well, the solution, the easy solution is create a new pa a new a new pa a new object pattern. Is change when you go to the on pause. Uh, you change your implementation of the view for a new object pattern. But this you need to make for every view and it's so too slow, so crazy, it's difficult, it's hard to say, okay, we don't want to have a lot of boilerplate. And we make it is that code. Okay, how many people there know what is a dynamic proxy? Okay, uh, a dynamic proxy is, uh, how many people there use Mokito? Okay, when you create uh, create a mock, you are changing the implementation of the class for a mock. It's good. Here is the same. I am I am saying to the to the Java virtual machine, hey, I am here. When you are going to call to the method get view, don't call to get view, call first to me. And I'm going to do is take the response to this method. I am going to do anything. Atas is really good. I am making a new level, uh, object pattern uh, using the garbage, the, using the, the GBM, using a dynamic proxy. Okay, and I have an empty, empty errors. The the callbacks don't go to anything. I then I don't need to touch any code. This is all magic. And there is that I say, okay, when you for this view, when create me to me a dynamic proxy, and I'm going to register for the class loader. That's really good. And uh, sometimes say, and this is going to affect to the performance? No, because it's one call, um, two calls, three calls. It's not a bad performance. Uh, domain layer, we have now the presentation. We have split it. We have divided the things. Uh, we have uh, different implementations. Okay, and now we have the domain. This is the most important part in your application. You need to uh, start to think always your projects thinking on the domain. But the problem is, is in applications, in Android application, the domain are really, really small because I take information, I print, I take a click, I send to the API. This is not a rich, a rich domain. But it's important to have this part. It's important to have this domain because it's the language that you have when you own developers. Use cases. 
What is a use case? Use case are defined that what my software do. Okay? Is birth. Do you think always use cases are modeling the name of the class is always a birth with an action? Get user. Send uh, message. Read message. Obtain message. Like uh, feed. It's always a birth. And it's a description. It's like a recipe. It's a recipe. You need to read to a recipe. A recipe. It's difficult to You need to read one and one. Okay? Get user. What makes way user? Get a user. It's easy. I don't need uh, any post fix. Get user interactor. Get user use case. Blah, blah, blah. Or user use case. And I have a lot of them inside. Not needed. I have, and it's really good for readability. I get a new developer in the company. I'm going to say, okay, you need to modify the user. Okay. Uh, when you click on the button, you go to the domain, you go to user, you expand use cases and say, okay, is the is modify user? No. Okay, I'm going to implement it. Is modify user? Ah, yes, it's, it's her. I'm going to use. Because I create the operations that my domain, my program, my software can do. And this is awesome for a developer, for a new developer, for make a refactor, for introduce to somebody and for the reliability of the code. And the idea is use cases don't take decisions. Only are a description that the software make. And for example, get user is okay, repository, take user, uh, send the user to the UI. This is a normal use case. You say, but you have a, lo a, 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 lo a few logic there. You have a class with only two methods. Yeah, all right. I have a class with only two methods. But it's really descriptive. And if I'm going to change something, I'm going to change there when I'm going to change uh, something with modify user. Sometimes I have 20 lines of code. Sometimes I only have two. It's not a problem. This is an example of what is our applications. Something. Come here, I use cases. Okay, for example, get user, can talk with domain model or with read model. For example, I need to make a calculation or something. I can have a model, uh, the feed, and sorting, and the sorting method is in there. Could be good. Okay, I have only domain models and models that are there and are, uh, I have only, only data. Okay, and there, please return always uh, immutable objects. Try. To work always, if you can try to work all, always in your in all of your stack with immutable objects, you going to is going to obtain a really good code, and you are going to remove a lot of problems. In is easier is remove the setters from your from your classes and uh, pass all argument with a constructor. This is too easy and resolve a lot of problems. Under is the domain model. Okay, this is all my data layer is going to return to me the domain model. How to make this one in with Rossi? We have use cases. Again, this is a, a the presenter, and the presenter I have a use case called get comics, and I pass to the use case call. I'm setting the arguments. Okay, I am setting a name. This is because how that work? We can have, uh, for example, uh, can a use cases have more than one method? Yes, it's possible. You have, for example, obtain users. I can obtain sorting by name and sorting by age. This must be the same use case. It's possible, yes, possible, no. Or, for example, if I can obtain from the network, I have some something with different cache policies, can be a good solution. And we give this one. This is the argument, and this is the success. On error. That while making this one is going to execute that use case, this is something similar to promises, more or less, because are no promises are a strange callbacks. And it may is going to execute the use case and is going to find the use case that argument that I pass matching, and it's going to resolve and go to return the success there. Okay, this is a method, it's on success. Uh, with annotation and success, and you have it, and you execute, and execute, launch it. Easy. 
and this is the implementation of the use case. We extend the Rossi use case, it's not mandatory, but we have there some easy code, that boilerplate that we want to hide. And this case is, uh, we use the use case annotation, when you are called from the execute, from the presenter, with the argument is going to match in there, it's going to execute this method with, uh, with, uh, with the IDs, and there i going to uh, invoke the things. Okay, I get the comics, this call to the repository or whatever what we want, and I'm going to notify success. Uh, we use notify success because one thing I want to do is, remember this all this code is going to be uh, synchronous, it's going to get the user, obtain the user, and notify. And sometimes that we made is we obtain the user, for example, from the cache or expired users that we want to send that are all data, and we make a notify, this arrive to the presenter and draw, and I make the call to the API and make an other notify. And this is good because we can make more than one notify in the same code and we are invoking to the to the class. And the same for errors. We can notify errors. That we are working with errors is uh, we are using exceptions until this port and this part to the to the top and we are using errors. We have there an a factory that take exceptions and convert in errors and we have an a, an a factory that return errors in visual stuff and it's working really well. Because that we made it is we split the good the good way, the good the the the, the good path of the code from the errors. Errors have a different path, have their own conversions, and have their own treatment, and you can trade in each point from each different way. This work always in this way, a split always error from, uh, from a good path of the code. Sorry. Uh, all those cases are sync, as I say before. This is because it's for us it's really easy, and we don't have the problem that uh, uh, making some calls, but we can do, who can do? Okay. Um, that we made it, uh, we have an use case uh, handler. Use case handler is an interface that we want to split the, the we want to split the, the definition of use case and the execution of the use cases. And when we made it, we have this interface, and this interface asked that to me to the asked that to me to the 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 how the use cases is going to be executed. Okay. I am, not, I am not coupling with any framework of execution. And the same uh, bah, 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 with the errors. I don't have, I have the same problem with the errors. And we are providing with the uh, dependency injection. If we want our implementation of the uh, schedule is implement the, implement the, 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 implement the schedule, the task schedule job queue. Now the current, the current implementation that we have just a library that is uh, period job queue, but we only use for for execute the cases. I can do this one with my own implementation, or for example, for testing we some, we remove we, we change this implementation for implementation with uh, without threads, and we run all in the same thread. And this is execution. And what make we do is we hide all those implementation that are dependent of the framework. That is, for example, PRDJQ implementation, the job of from PRDJQ. We wrap this thing, and we have the f uh, we have outside of the Rossi implementation. Okay, in Rossi, don't depends of all these things. And um, for example, one thing that we doing, we are creating, uh, we are creating a cap, a thing of this one over the Eric Java. Okay. The problem is that we need to leak the observable to call to the presenter, but we can do something similar, creating wrappers and returning objects. Okay. And other problem that we want is avoid memory leaks. The problem with memory leaks is if I pass into my use cases uh, a reference to the view, a callback that we need to call, I can have a memory leak because I am leaking the, the context. What we made is uh, what we make is uh, create does use case call. Do you remember in the presenter when I invoke and you call to the uh, execute case call, and this one have a retain use case call. This is we retain in the base 
of our activities of fragments will retain their uh, callbacks of the use cases. This is because internally the library works with we references. I need to retain. This is, uh, we have two ways to do the, those one that the framework made for you in the base classes or made by yourself that you can do. In the Redmi, we have uh, both approach. We need to retain this one, but you can use uh, you can use the the inner classes. If you watch, this is uh, the use case parameter that you are passing to a use case, and this is the always always with with reference. Please review that you are not leaking in your implementations uh, your callbacks. Try to use with reference always that you need. And I'm not going to show you the code with the arguments because it's really complex. But when you're passing arguments to the to the machine, we are converting. We have tables to convert uh, primitives to classes, classes to primitive, R and C. You have to try to receive a base class, and you are say, uh, passing a, a child class that they can make all that stuff. Collection generics is crazy. Uh, data layer. The data layers only must to have information related with data layers. Okay? And this is a problem that every people have. I talk with a lot of developers, I receive a lot of emails that explain me. I have a problem. I have my phone. I turn the phone and my data disappear. When I turn again, the data disappear and I lost the data, I need to cast, I am I am retaining the presenter with a frontman, I'm converting all my classes with bundles, and I have problem because bundles and CRI servers, I can use Realm, I go crazy. You are crazy, you are moving your problem when you don't have. For example, navigation, other problem. I in a, I in the in a feed, I click in a row, I go to the tile, I click in like. I go back, the like don't exist until refresh. Really, this is a problem? No, but I am doing now is I am passing, I am passing all completely object in a bundle to the detail activity, I modify an, an activity for result, I return a game for back. Really? You are moving the problem to the right place. For example, for both problem that you can make is you have your data in the data layer and you only pass from feed and detail to the, uh, the ID. And you take the information from the API and save it, and do a storage in a cache. And when you go back in on your resume, you call again to get, get user. And this is going to access to this cache. It's going to be really fast, and you are not have that problem. And the same with turn on, turn with the turn the screen, change orientation. If I change the orientation, I'm going to access to the cache. When I'm going to uh, orientation again, it's going to access to the cache, and the data is going to be the same. I say, OK, but sometimes if the data is not loaded, I'm going to make more than one call to the API. This is a problem for you? You have a problem to make two, three, four calls to the API? Yes, it's a problem. Where is the problem? It's in the API. No, it's in your data layer. Go into the your API and write code to say, OK, you have a call, and I receive other call with the same parameters. This, the second call is going to be attached to the first one, and I'm going to call back uh, with the last one, not to all. They solve the problem when they do have the problem not scale the problem to you to to you ui layers okay uh, this is really important we will write code thinking in the layer we need to be agnostic to the data information if i if i don't know if the data comes from the uh, uh, api or comes from the cache or comes from the database this is going to be really good because i can change the implementations i can say okay the backend changes I don't touch anything. I only change the backend implementation. Uh, I have a problem with realms. I'm going to move to SQL or something new happens. I'm going to move this one. Or I don't have time to write the backend. I'm going to start with Firebase. Or I want to want provide uh, dumb information because the API is failing or because it's a test. The o we need to be agnostic to the origin of the data. But sometimes that is important. You need to keep this in mind. If my domain say I need to obtain information from the cache because I need to draw all information, this is a domain requirement. And in this domain requirement, 
where the data come from is really important because it's a domain requirement. It's in the in the ticket in Jira appear that I need the information as fast as possible. This is a domain requirement. And you and this will be reflected in your domain. And it's a question that you need to make to the to data layer. How uh, we obtain that uh, that independency from the data uh, origin. We use a pattern that is the repository pattern. This is a pattern that uh, comes from the domain driven design, coming from the, uh, a book is Domain Principles or Domain, domain Driven Design, I think is the name of the book. And the idea is be agnostic uh, of, the, the, of the origin of data. And the other one is we are passing from somewhere, API, database, says we, I don't know to uh, active records, I don't know, to domain objects. And uh, must allow make queries, make questions, make queries to thus origin of the data. For this reason, repositories working always with list because I need to make questions to somebody that I don't know, I going to receive domain information. This is the pattern and we add two things that are useful for us in that pattern. One is this one, it's the cache level. We have a cache level similar to to comp to, uh, to, go to CPU cache. Okay, we have a cache, then we have levels of cache and we can access into this one. Okay, level one, level two, level three, it's really easy to obtain information. For example, I, I, I want to obtain a user, I'm going to the cache level, I'm asking to the cache level, i asking to Realm, Real don't have it, I'm going, I have it to retrofit, Retrofit always have it because it's the network. I take the information and come back. And all the thing that we add to this uh, pattern is populator. The idea of populator is make the opposite. Is one the caches? Okay. If I take information from Retrofit from the API, I am going to take this information and give to Realm, and Realm is going to uh, a storage. And the next time that I went, the information is going to be in Realm. I don't have to access to the Retrofit. Okay, this is out of the pattern. This is more or less inside the pattern because in some implementations of the pattern say that you can have one or more origin of the data, one or more data sources, but this is the idea. And the other important thing is that kind of matter. Remember, I, I must to be agnostic to the origin of the data. The domain only knows domain object. For this reason, Framework object like uh, API, like uh, uh, database object, don't cross that line. Okay, don't cross that line. And I convert this information in domain logic and I return there. That's good. And re with this reason, you avoid a lot of problems. For example, annotations for retrofit is only in retrofit models. And Realm problems with what well, they don't have now, but real problems with context of threat changes. And other thing good is I can do here in that mapper some of logic. I can convert flat in information, for example, uh, address, uh, street address, number address, blah, blah address, uh, I don't know, floor address. I can take all this information in this mapper can create an address object. And in my domain, I have an address object. I don't have a really big a domain object. They have an object that have semantic. And other one I can make is uh, remove unnecessary things. I don't need the uh, foreign key or I don't need uh, something that's for a cache key that is in the API. I can remove that kind of information. Uh, pa -pa -pa -pa. Who made this one in Rossi? Uh, we create a Rossi repository. Uh, this is an example. You can, you can, it, it don't need it to stand. It's only for you. So you can, uh, you can uh, provide the information with a builder from the side of the class. Okay, but you can create a sample repository that have sample API data source and sample cache data source. Some of this implementation we are giving for you. We are creating a basic, uh, I think it's not merged, it's not merged, but we have a realm implementation of the data source and we have uh, uh, a cache, uh, main cache implementation. And you can go here and you add and say, okay, I'm going to add a data source that is only for read, is only readable. For example, the API, you can write in the API in this case, you can only read, and you have a data source 
that is a cache that have, I can write and I can read. That's good. And with two lines, I create a lot of, I remove a lot of boilerplate. And who is the implementation of this one? This is a, a data cache that have a key and a value. It's a memory cache, and you define with uh, time provider uh, five milliseconds. And you have, y with this one, with this five line of code, you have a main cache with Rossi, and you need to implement it. And it's tested, it's working, and it's fine. And we are being the same for, for Realm. And this is the code of inside of the, this is the code that you can make with that repository. I have a repository, I can, uh, I have a repository, I can request by, by key, I can request by key with a policy, for example, if I only want read, I only want from the cache, that kind of things. I can get all, I can get all with the policy, I can add uh, values or the values, I can delete by key, and I can make operation above the repository. All those imp operations are implemented, and you, for example, for the API layer, you, you only have to uh, add your call to retrofit or you call your API. That's really good. It's, you remove a lot of boilerplate code. And um, a thing that we are doing is if you want to create new features, for example, I want to make a filter, I want to make something, uh, uh, I don't know, something that is not there, you can extend and create your own uh, repository that is standing from the previous one. Okay, if you watch here, this is more or less the implementation, this is mapper and the real model and this one. <coughs> and the populator, okay, this is code of the, sorry, of the cache. This is the code of the cache. I'm going to say you something that, okay, it's not there, but well, here is the implementation, blah, 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 and this is really important. We have in consideration things that the people uh, always forget, like synchronize, please. If you have a concurrency code, try to synchronize that code, it's really important. And uh, please remember non return from data sources, don't return. Uh, don't return uh, the instance. Don't return the same instance. Return always copy. In more when you are working with collections, because you can have problems with uh, concurrent modification problems. Blah, blah, blah. The big problem there is there. I say, okay, yes, tell me to you that return clones, but you are not doing there with that object. This is because not all objects implement clonable, and I can make a clone in, in an easy way. And if I made this one, I must to force to you to implement a clone for all objects that is not uh, really good for a framework. Okay. The other idea is this is working with co how we work with the cache levels and uh, population data. Uh, in all this implementation, this is really easy. We decide to create a really easy implementation inside the repositories. That is, we check the policy, we check if you're using cache, if we want to return the data for cache. And we make all this code generic, and this is the method for for cache. It's searching the cache, it's searching the, the good the values, searching the good values, and the term. One thing that we are doing is this one. I think is we change it in the. I think it's now is changed, but uh, when the cache expires, we are removing the information, and sometimes it's not a good option because if you want to retrieve all information and disappear. You can you can have it. But as a consider implementation consideration that we have in the time because we don't have the problem and we change it. And this is if not in the cache, I'm going to the I'm going to the variables, the data sources, and obtain from the from the data sources. If I have the information after obtain the, the variable and populate the caches and start. And populate the caches is only they obtain all, all, all data sources that are for writing and populated uh, storing information. All this code is really easy, it's not really magic, only when made is uh, generalized is in all your applications. And we say, okay, it's, it's on all my applications, it's in all applications of everybody, I'm going to try to generalize and try to uh, avoid that problem that everybody has about with caches, with uh, obtain data, repeat the, those. If I have in the cache, I take the information. If not, I go to the API, blah, 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 in all, all, all classes. Uh, five, uh, a, few conf a few conclusions. Uh, like always, bullet plates, 
done exist. This is going to um, resolve all problems. Let's solve the problem that I have in my day of day. This is not working for all applications. If you are creating a Strava, it's possible that a lot of things is not working. But works for a lot of applications. Uh, works like I experienced and I bullet points for you that how to think in a how to create open source. Okay? And sometimes are not the best code, but it's working. Uh, it's easy to uh, add features. It's easy to, uh, it's okay, I will need to uh, add reactive. I need to use K reactive. I need to use K that uh, don't go to the, don't go out to the main thread. We make it. We can create now, right now, and use case and tune an OSER bubble. That's easy. And we create the task manager, the task manager that know to work with OSER bubbles. That's easy. Okay. Or, uh, for example, create new data sources, create data sources for RAM, for an SQL. This kind of thing is really easy to stand, okay, to modify. Is 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 thought for new uh, project. If you like it, don't go don't go to your application that have two thousand line of code. Well, two thousand no, I have fourteen thousand line of code. I want to change to Rossi. This is awesome. No, because that's going to work. This is thought in um, is thought in for a uh, project from scratch. For this reason, is really good. If you have all projects that we are making out of companies, is we take some part of this code. And we introduce, for example, the new library object pattern, or the press, or the life anchor. We can you can take and put in your project. It's useful for you. Uh, an idea we are making something similar in iOS. And our idea uh, is um, is a split uh, a split the project in three: one for UI, one for the main, and one for data source. And this is going to be useful because you are not couple all copy architecture to the framework. In iOS, we are doing this way. The presentation layer uh, is uh, published. You can, you can review it, and it's working really well as well. Uh, we forgot about concurrency. If you say in any place of the, of the project, I work with concurrency. I don't have problem with concurrency. I only say I make calls and I receive callbacks. That's all. Uh, that's, uh, that's all I need to know about concurrency using Rossi. And it's easy to test and mock. It's easy to write tests over there. We can every point of view is using uh, injection, and it's really easy to to write tests. It's more uh, uh, if you check the project, it's all covered with tests, the sample and the code, and pr and the articles about testing uh, the, the testing pipeline. From Pedro is using this approach, and we have different approach for testing for application, and it's working really well. And it's open source. Somebody want to contribute, want read it, want give their opinion. Uh, software is opinionable. Everybody can have an, his own ideas. But if you want to create open issues, have ideas, find bugs, everyone you want is open source. We are open to listen to you. And we are open to your ideas, your own code. If you want to take this for a new project, please, it's, it's free, it's public, it's under Apache, Apache 2 license. You can use, you can modify, you can take, and you can contribute. Thank you very much. I think you, you have any questions. I'm really happy to respond to you. Hi, uh, I was also using, um, I mean, this approach because it's uh, not Rosy because it's kind of all the uh, architecture. There was like clean architecture, Mosby. It's all, in fact, the same architecture. Uh, in my project, but I, I've seen a different problem that uh, lots of stuff uh, cannot be really uh, like. S uh, for example, if you have in, in, in presenter uh, some code that is coupling with a view, uh, we cannot extract it to use cases. And there is 
sometimes a, a lot of code that we cannot uh, extract to use cases. So uh, the presenters are, are growing and I want to keep the presenters smaller. So uh, the point is to not have more than, I don't know, one, 100 lines. Uh, so the I, I have my own answer because I, I, I had my own idea for that, but, but the question is how are you doing it uh, in your projects to uh, keep uh, presenters smaller? Okay, I'm going to show this. I, I, I mean, for example, the, um, use, uh, the, the use case when you have uh, close coupling with view, like, I don't know, the, you have a button, you click it, you have yeah. a di dialogue which is changing this yeah. button and doing something else. Remember that you c uh, one thing that have a really good part of the presenters is that uh, you don't need to have one view, one presenter. You can give semantic to your presenters. For example, I'm going to put an example that I have. I have a, I have an a list with things. I have a, a really complex application that have a toolbar with a search, okay, and uh, the feed and creating creating uh, and creating content. I have three presenters. Uh, it's more rosy. Uh, you can have more than one presenter in activity. You have more than one applica one presenter. You can split. You can split your presentations. You you can split this one in three presenters. I have the search bar presenter, uh, the create content presenter, and the feed presenter. I have three presenters with three and my activity implements the three views. It's more I because it's a lot of complex. The creation is not implemented in the activity. Is the code of the creation is implemented in a, a it's like implemented in a in a custom view. That that the see the get view, okay? It's the get view who has the code for the server because I can re I can reuse these custom views in a lot of places. But the idea is you can split, and the presenter only have the code from the logic, and call to use cases the thief information, uh, choose the what is going to be rendered, modify classes, and return to the view. And in this thing in this in this place the presenter is not growing because only have that kind of thing that are from this part of the view. This is a really good. You don't need to have one-on-one uh, -on -one between activities and presenters. Sometimes the normal one because you have a detail and you have a presenter detail, but you can split in different presenters. So also the activity is implementing a few different... Uh, yeah, Imp it's, it's implementing a few uh, different get views. Okay. And if but the activity the is growing, you take things from these implementations and you move to a controller, a custom view, you move to other place. But um, it's still not uh, solving the problem of growing activity because uh, you still, uh, for example, these presenters are interacting with these view elements, so it have to go through activity. So the activity will be populated with lots of small methods like uh, free lines methods. That is no, because, because uh, if you make a custom view, you make yeah. that the custom view implements the, the interface and you're passing uh, like it's in the set view, you're passing the, the custom view. You obtain the custom view and you're passing the activity yeah. that makes bind to the to the presenter. And he's going to receive it. Okay. Or the presenter could be inside to the custom view. It's all the solution that you can have. Okay, I, I did it differently, but thank you. Okay. Uh, hi, thanks uh, f just f to start. Thank you for a great presentation. Thank you for such clear explanation of your architecture. You mentioned that we should uh, stay close with mutable data from uh, data layer, yeah, from with mutable model. Uh, how do you solve the issues, not the issue, but the case when do you when I you are working on the object which need to be synchronized I mean that activity or uh, view have an influence on a uh, model on the data and it's modified not not by the view but use case for example does not uh, know to the end what it should do I mean for example usual checkbox I agree with the license, I don't agree with the license. Okay. Do you create a separate 
presenter model, how is you call it like that, it's the same thing, yeah, for it and passing to the use case. Or you have two separate use cases with, I know, registration with agreement, registration without agreement. How do you handle such small cases? Uh, okay, the best one, the best one with a boolean is really easy because boolean is a multiple object. Okay, but the best one is you take. For example, I like, I prefer, I do, I I I don't like have like use cases and unlike use cases. I prefer pass a boolean. But this is only because for error handling, not for concurrency and modifying. It's only for how I return from the error handling. But this is other other question. Uh, that it made is I have, for example, my like and it plus the boolean, and I create, I recreate the object in a storage, because I only have one place that have the true about the information. This is the data sources. Okay, the only thing that the is of to have the true about this. The about the state of the data is the data sources. And when I ask into to them, for example, sometimes I pre, pre cache values. I pre cache values. I don't wait into the API comeback. I, for example, if I go to uh, old data like I store the information in the API and send to the API and I don't wait to the API give me a response. I save in the cache the value too. I have, and when come back, Populator synchronize again, and if they giving an error, I come back to the back. I have a fallback. Okay, this is another approach for populators return from for, uh, return data from from errors. But the idea is you call to the use case with the boolean true or false, and uh, and data source is with the set in the value, and you have only place with the true. If I say it's like it, it's going to see or is affected, it's going to say yes. But for example, this other case that is more complex than this one, filters. Imagine that I have application with a search or with something, with a fit, and I have different filters. Salary, uh, address, blah, blah, blah. I am not, muta I am not cre I'm creating a mutation over the filter object. When I send a new filter, I create an object. I say, okay, I'm going to take the old filter. I'm going to create a new one with the copy values. I'm going to do the setting the new ones. I'm going to set this object to my data source. Cross the cross the the use case, whatever. Because it's really easy to have. Because I have uh, only the good information is in data source. If not already into data source, it's going to have the old ones. And when I write the new one, it's going to be set. Okay, you avoid a lot of problems with uh, concurrency and a lot of problems with mutation data because you only have one place when the data is mutation. That is the data source. Okay, now uh, I okay. can clearly see, but thanks God you mentioned about uh, filters. How do you store filters through the instance state? Do you like keep it? Okay, data source. Do you cache it like an object in memory? Do you lo lo do you well the the case is for example I'm user I'm filtering something now someone has called me I'm I'm opened uh, I answered so I talked for five minutes system uh, Android friendly killed our previous application we are opening uh, the previous screen and bam do we have those filters cached? Okay, here I remember two things. Okay, well. First one, I don't. I never use a repository. I use a, re a data source because it's not a collection. This is really important. And the other one, what implementation I use uh, for filters for that kind of information, that filters, sessions, uh, that things that are object. I use two things. Uh, I try to use uh, share preference because it's a preference. The filter is a preference. They can they can share. Or if I have Realm, sometimes use Realm because it's really fast. And remember that the uh, that if you implemented something with uh, with uh, uh, with shared preference, remember that the shared preference uh, have an cache, have an internal cache in memory, are really fast. You don't need to implement a memory cache over a shared preference because the shared preference have a memory cache ins inside inside them. If you are using, for example, for self filters, I using an an self preference my data source. I have a domain object is the filter, and I have a data source that is the is the is a self preference implementation of the data cache, of the of the, of the of the data source, and it's really easy. I obtain the information from the data from the 
from the cell preference, I am reconvert to the main and return. So just to finalize, you mentioned, okay, we'll keep a uh, filter in a uh, share preference. So what are the cases when you would like to keep some data in the bundle? If uh, your, in your architecture, is there some place where you use or prefer to use bundle, not shared preferences, not database, not uh, persistent storage, when but just bundle? But, uh, remember that the minimum accumulation between classes. Okay, when I'm working with uh, when I working with objects or when I working with sending messages, the important thing is always send the less information between layers and between uh, between layers and between classes. If I want I want to open an activity that I want to make is send from one activity to the other one the less minimum information that I need to open. If I need only one ID, I'm going to send the ID. If I can open without anything, I'm going to open with anything. Uh, this is really good. It's a really good point. If, for example, I need to send the filter to one activity to other activity, possible not. Possible if I can say uh, open, apply in the filters, and it's only one boolean. He take the filter to data source, apply. It's possible that the filters don't have in the UI in in the in the presenter. It's possible that the uh, the use case take the take the filters, apply directly uh, with information the API and return the information. And filters are transparent for your architecture and untransparent for your presentation. You only say, okay, I want to use this activity with filters mode. And because I can modify the filters in this screen or whatever. And only try to throw between activities and fragment the less information possible. Because if you make this one, when you need to open that activity for a notification center, or that activity for a service, or that activity for a where, or that activity for other, for a link, or for other uh, place, it's going to be easier that you are passing a lot of information to the activity for build. Okay, thank you. Have you thought about using something like code generation instead of inheritance? I don't know yeah. how, but I think uh, there are things that could, could be done. We, we were thinking about this one. Uh, the problem is that uh, where you are working, which this is a, a project that for, for the day of day, uh, code generation, the debugging of code, can you have a problem with code generation? Yes. I don't know if you have a problem with Dagger 2 or with Dagger 1 or what, something that's creating code. When you have a, pro a bug, you want to die. Yeah. And uh, we say, okay, we are going to take consideration about the time consuming, making, for example, thing with reflections, a thing with uh, errancy, and say, okay, this is not as slow. And I am using errancy in Android too. Android is forcing to me to use errancy for its thing. And say, okay, well, we are thinking in, in, in create and in generate code, but was too, it was too ugly um, for debugging and for thinking and for problem with, uh, uh, with uh, passing um, pro war and that kind of thing. I say, okay, not for now, but possible in the future. We are we are thinking to have in the future some code generation, but not right now. Okay, could be nice. So, if somebody want to make it, please tell us. And I pull request, no? <laughs> yes, yeah, public. Thanks. That's all, no? It's a coffee break. Thank you very much. If you have more questions, I'll be there.